We're building a rainwater system to get free water for life. And the only rain for the month is coming in just two days. And there's a bit of an issue. We haven't actually built the rainwater system yet. See, our purifier needs pre-cleaned water to work, and our pond water is anything but that. I, I think it's gonna work, Ben. It's been like 30 minutes and uh, the sand, everything is still there. We really need rainwater. So we searched for the most affordable and simple rainwater system. And every search led right to the first flush method. Super affordable, simple, and kind of genius. So before we try and build it before the rain comes, I'll explain how the first flush system operates. So it's raining and your gutters are flowing with water. And you think, I'm gonna capture that. So you take some PVC pipe, an IVC tote, and bam, you're collecting rainwater. And you're collecting leaves and bird poop too. Okay, so I'm sure there's some sort of purifier out there to take care of this. Except there's not. Leaves are still gonna gunk it up. And a purifier cannot keep up with the water volume coming off your roof. So a purifier won't cut it. So the first piece of equipment we're gonna wanna get is something called a leaf eater, which is basically a mesh over a box and it's gonna capture all your larger debris but unfortunately the bird waste and other small stuff is still getting in wait a second we have clean water flowing out now but we know the leaf eater isn't doing this so what just happened well when you have a roof covered in leaves and other matter it's all gonna come off when enough rainwater has fallen so this means you can really just expect a lot of debris in the first few gallons of rainwater but eventually all the rainwater coming off your roof will be much cleaner so the question is how do we divert the first few gallons of rainwater but then start collecting it once it's more clean well, the answer is the first flush system. But before we break down the simple genius of this system, let's first install the gutters and leaf eater. Now that we've cleaned up the area, we'll set out all the gutter pieces parallel to the micro cabin and go ahead and put it all together to get an idea of what it should look like once it's actually installed onto the micro cabin. This is the left end cap. We've got a left and a right to keep the rainwater from going off the sides of our gutters. We simply pop this on the end of the gutter, then we crimp it to make sure it doesn't move out of place, and then we caulk it to keep the water from leaking out of the edges. That's all there is to it. This is a five inch gutter seam. This is how we connect two segments of 10 foot gutter together. This goes on the outside, both pieces of gutter slide in, and then we use epoxy to tighten it all up and keep it glued so water doesn't leak out. This is the downspout connector. So this downspout connector is at the very end of our gutter setup. The gutters are all gonna be slightly tilted towards this so that all the water is funneled through here. This will then pipe the water down into a flexible pipe which goes to the first flush diverter and then the actual rainwater storage tanks. This is our universal strainer. This is temporary before we put in a better rain guard and leaf guard on top of the gutter. This keeps leaves from clogging up the downspout. These are the clip mounts that pop inside of the gutter. Then there's a screw that anchors the gutter onto the fascia board on the side of the micro cabin. And we're actually gonna be aiming to line these up where there is a rafter on the roof for a deeper anchor. We're gonna measure along the gutter to evenly space these out. We wanna make sure that we've got a clip at the edge of every piece of gutter for the maximum support so that the gutters don't sag on the end. Rather than epoxy the gutter seams on the ground where it would be one 20 foot segment of awkward unwieldy gutter, we're gonna put both 10 foot segments in position and screw them into the fascia board, then come back with the gutter seam with epoxy to have a nice clean fit, let that dry, and then the gutter is mounted. Ben's gonna hold the middle of the first segment of gutter while I mount the first screw into this far corner. That's gonna be the highest point of the gutter. It's gonna be just underneath the drip line. Then we're gonna have a half inch drop, so the gutter drops half an inch towards the middle of the micro cabin to let the water flow towards the downspout. Before we put up the second segment of 10 foot gutter, we're gonna go ahead and epoxy this seam and put that up on the existing gutter panel before sliding the second one into position because then we wouldn't have the room to maneuver this into place. Now that we've got both pieces up here, I'm gonna use this epoxy to do a thin bead over the gap. So we're gonna epoxy the last seam under this second segment of 10-foot gutter. Then we're gonna attach the end downspout, epoxy that, screw it in, and we've pretty much got the first step all done. All right, now we're gonna connect the first flush diverter to the gutter system, now that the gutter system is attached to the micro cabin. We do this in three stages. First, we install the gutter system and take all those measurements to make sure the gutter system is properly attached and measured. Then we can take measurements for the pipes that go down on the micro cabin's back 
to be able to connect to the first flush diverter. And we measure out all those pieces of pipe and get that all set up. The third and final step is measuring the piping we need from the first flush diverter to the actual IBC tanks. There's a lot of measuring that requires first pieces to be installed. That's why we take these measurements and buy these pieces in three stages to make sure we do it properly so the whole system fits together. So before we build it, here's an explanation of how the first flush filter works. Once your leaf eater has caught all the bigger debris, the water with the smaller debris falls into the pipe below, where there's a plastic ball that rises with the water level, eventually hits a ring inside which seals off the bottom pipe so fresh water now goes out the side. So now the question is, how much rainwater do we need to seal off in the bottom pipe before it becomes clean? Well, let's do a few measurements. If we take the square footage of our roof, which is 10 feet by 20 feet, or 3 meters by 6 meters, it's 200 square feet or 18 square meters. Since rainfall is usually calculated in inches or centimeters, let's convert these numbers. So our roof space is 28,800 square inches or 180,000 square centimeters. And according to various online sites, you need about 0.025 inches or 0.063 centimeters of rainwater to wash off your tin roof. So now if we take the area of our roof and multiply it by the height of water needed, we see that it'll take 700 inches cubed or 10,800 centimeters cubed of water to rinse off our roof. And that's equal to three gallons or 10 liters of water. So now we know we need to at least have three gallons or 10 liters of water in the pipe before the ball seals it up, which will then force the rest of the rainwater, which is now clean, into the IBC totes. So we need the exact amount of pipe to hold the 3 gallons or 10 liters of water. We're using 3 inch pipe, and after using an online tool, 3 gallons of water is equal to about 8 feet of 3 inch pipe. 8 feet of vertical pipe won't work, it's going to go into the ground, so we cut it in half to make this L shape. These extra pieces to make the L shape added more volume, so we only need about 6 to 6.5 feet of pipe now. Now that we've got everything laid out for the first flush diverter and the PVC pipes to the tanks, we're going to mount this leaf eater to filter out the leaves on the side of the micro cabinet. Now that we've got the leaf eater mounted on the micro cabin, we're going to cut about a 6 inch chunk of PVC to connect the leaf eater to our three-way PVC joint. We're gonna insert this wire mesh, which will just be a friction fit. This keeps the green ball from going into the horizontal component of the first flush diverter. We don't want that green ball getting trapped. To anchor the pipe securely, it's important that you find a stud underneath of the exterior shell. Simply look for screws or nail heads that are on the outside under the paint. That's where your stud most likely is. The first flush converter needs a drip cap on the end. This way the three gallons of dirty water we sealed up have a way to leak out before the next rain. If it's more than a drip, all the water is going to flow out, making it where you can't seal off the first flush with the plastic ball. Now I'll connect some tubing to send all the water from the gutters to the leaf eater. Now it's time to put our IBC tote into place. The great thing is, you can put as many IBC totes in a row as you want and just connect it with a piece of pipe on the bottom. For our needs, we only need one. We're literally wrapping up the last part of this and the rain is starting to come down. Not a moment too soon to wrap up this project. We'll now measure for the last piece of pipe that runs from the wall of the micro cabin into the IBC tote. Water is always going to find a path of least resistance. Since we have not cemented any of these joints together, we're really trying to make sure there's always a downhill slope. Our theory, at least, is that as long as the slopes are downhill, the water is going to follow that path of least resistance. Whereas if there's an accidental uphill slope, this joint would leak. We're going to find out. Now we're going to put a cover on the IBC tank to prevent unwanted algae growth. If sunlight hits the water, algae will grow in here faster and we want to avoid that. We'll then put a piece of overflow pipe going over the side of the IBC tote with a filter to make sure nothing can crawl up inside of it. Now that it's complete, all the rainwater coming in tomorrow during the big storm can now be used for drinking water, as our purifier can handle it compared to the pond water. 